الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم مبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Welcome brothers and sisters to another uh, installment of our light study of selected hadith from Riyadh Salihin and inshallah ta'ala we will be uh, going into the chapter of al-istiqama bab al-istiqama the chapter of uprightness but before doing that, uh, as always, before leaving one chapter and transitioning into another one, we'd like to recap the previous chapter. So we'd like to spend some time, inshallah ta'ala, this evening recapping the chapter of al-yaqeen, wa tawakkul, the chapter of certainty and reliance. And in that chapter, we covered six ahadith, six very uh, excellent, very um, beneficial tremendously informative ahadith of, of Rasulullah sallam and we opened the discussion of the chapter by defining the terms uh, al-yaqeen and tawakkul and we mentioned that al-yaqeen specifically can be defined as huwa an yaqwa al-iman wa thabat hatta ka'anna al-insan yara bi'aynihi ma akhbar Allah bihi wa rasuluhu min shiddati imanihi so the strengthening of a person's faith and it's becoming established to the extent that it is as if the person sees with his own eyes what Allah and his messenger have informed of regarding matters of the unseen. Another ta'rif, another definition of al-yaqeen was huwa thabatun wa imanun laysa ma'ahu shak fi wajhin min wujuh. It is a conviction and faith which is not accompanied by any semblance of doubt. And this al-yaqeen is an important characteristic, important quality that each one of us should try, strive in earnest to achieve, to embody. And the reason for this is because without a yaqeen, without this certainty, this level of faith, this unyielding uh, conviction, without that we are one shubha, we are one spacious argument, one dubious assertion away from disbelieving. We are one calamity away from abandoning faith. That what keeps a person firmly rooted in faith during the times of calamities, during the times where we are confronted with misconceptions, spacious arguments, uh, dubious assertions about the religion of Allah that make us question what keeps us firmly grounded in faith and keeps us from leaving our faith, it is this yaqeen. This level of conviction, this level of iman that we spoke about, that لا يتطرق إليه شك من أي وجه من الوجوه لا يتطرق إليه شك من أي وجه من الوجوه That at no point in time is doubt able to undermine the foundations of faith rooted in our hearts. It just can't happen. And calamities do not make us question our faith. Because of why? Because we have this level of yaqeen. So this is why al-yaqeen is so important. Then we talked about a little bit about tawakkul. What does a tawakkul mean? We said it is i'timad al-insan ala rabbihi fi zahirihi wa batinihi fi ijtinabi, uh, fi ijtinabi, I'm sorry, um, fi jalb al-masalihi wa daf al-mabar. We said it is a person depending upon his Lord, inwardly and outwardly, to bring about that which is beneficial and desirable and to ward off that which is detrimental and undesirable. And again, why is this important? Why is this so important? It's important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّرَ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Whoever puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will suffice him. Allah will be sufficient for him. Allah will be more than enough for him. On the other side of it, we are taught that whoever Allah subhanahu, whoever Allah subhanahu wa okay, if we don't put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we put our trust in our own selves, or we put our trust in the means, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will entrust us to our own selves and to the means. Allah will not be there for us. He will not support us. He will not help us to achieve our endeavors, to bring about the things that we desire, and to ward off the things that we uh, are afraid of. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandons us, as the ulama have taught us, وَمَنْ وَمَنْ وُكِلَ إِلَى نَفْسِهِ and whoever is just entrusted, left to his own devices, left to fend for himself by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be what? He will be he will perish. He'll, he'll be destroyed. Why? Because we are utterly dependent, totally dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, for the air that we breathe. We are extremely weak. 
And a lot of times, because we are human and because of the intellect and the intelligence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we think with, that we are uh, able to support ourselves. We, are t we can be totally independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not the case. We are totally, utterly dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any, um, any uh, apparent indication that we are independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just that it is, um, it is just an appearance of independence. We are totally dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why this tawakkul is so important. And we mentioned that a tawakkul, in order to achieve it, then it must, uh, we must have two pillars. There are two uh, fundamental pillars of a tawakkul that when they are both, when they both come together, then you have true tawakkul. And without one of them, you do not have a tawakkul. And we said the first one of them is employing the appropriate and legal means to achieve the desired or towards achieving the desired, towards achieving the desired result. So basically what that means is that there are some appropriate means. What, what we mean by appropriate is we, are, we mean that they are means to the end, that they are something that can actually enable us to achieve our objective. Like, for example, let's say that a person was poor and he wanted, he needed money. So he could steal, for example, and that stealing would be an appropriate means, meaning what? It is something which will enable him to get what he seeks. But it wouldn't be legal because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits stealing and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi prohibits stealing. So the means cannot just be appropriate, meaning that it is capable of bringing about the result, but it also has to be legal. That's the first pillar, that we employ the legal and appropriate means. The second pillar is that we rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the means to produce the desired results. Meaning that, let's say, for example, that a person uh, is poor and they go and they seek employment. They go and they um, basically develop a skill and then they use that skill to find employment. So developing the skill and then going out and taking these job interviews, these are all means. They are legal and appropriate means. And so that's half of a tuakka. But we don't believe that just because we have the skill or we have the training or the experience or we have the credentials, that that will be enough. But rather, the means are simply that, the means. They are not the end. They themselves are not capable of bringing about the result. Only Allah can bring about the result. And so we put our trust in Allah, not in the, in the means. These are the two pillars of a tuakkul. And uh, this is supported, these two pillars are supported, one by the hadith of Umar al-Khattab, collected by Tirmidhiyu, the one that we actually came in our reading of the Bab of Atawakkul wal yaqeen The hadith where the Prophet said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ uh, that if you were to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you ought to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He would provide for you the way He provides for the birds. He said, تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَرُوحُوا بِطَانًا He said that these birds, they go out in the morning with their bellies empty and they return with their bellies full. But you notice, they go out. And so they go out putting their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they employ the legal and permissible means, the, I'm sorry, the legal and appropriate means, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they put their trust in Allah, and Allah provides for them. We also have the hadith, Hadith about Tirmidhi as well, on the authority of Anas, in which uh, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ, and he mentioned that he had a naqa, and that um, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, when I leave my naqa, because of some haja, because of some need, I need to leave my naqa, should I just leave it? And put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or should I tie it up, tie it to a post or tie it to a tree so that it doesn't, it doesn't stray away. The Prophet he said, wa tawakkal. He said, tie it up and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing that the Prophet expects his ummah, his followers, to do both things, not one or the other. Not to consider it an either or circumstance, but rather to understand that a tawakkul is, the true tawakkul is employing the legal and appropriate means and putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relying on Him and not on the means. Then by that, I um, just want to do a review of some of the things that we learned or we took away from the chapter and the hadith that we studied in the chapter. The first one was the virtue of putting complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first hadith we took was a hadith collected by Bukhari Muslim, authority of Abbasin, 
And that was a famous hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he mentioned that he was shown in a dream, he was shown the previous, he was shown the nations and their prophets. He was shown the previous nations and their prophets. And he saw some prophets who had no followers. He saw some prophets who had very few followers, one or two followers. And then he saw this huge, um, this huge assembly of followers. And he thought that that assembly, because of its, uh, its, um, because of its abundance, the abundance of, of followers, he thought that it was his ummah. But he was told, no, that is the ummah of Musa, alayhi salam, Moses. And then he was told to look at the, the opposite horizon. And there was an even larger assembly of followers. And he was told, this is your ummah. And he was told, وَمِنْهُمْ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفًا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِلَا عَذَابٍ I'm sorry, بِلَا حِسَابٍ وَلَا عَذَابٍ he said, and from there, there are 70,000, he was told, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that from your ummah, there are 70,000 who will enter paradise with neither reckoning nor punishment. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, later in the hadith, he informed what was the quality or the qualities, what were the qualities that this group of followers possessed that permitted them to receive this virtue. And the Prophet mentioned, he said, هُمْ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَكْتَوُونَ um, وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He said, uh, basically, that they are those who do not do ruqya for themselves, nor do they seek that ruqya be done for them by others, nor do they heal their or treat their uh, wounds or their illnesses through cauterization or via cauterization, and they do not uh, believe in evil omens. And they put their complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the things that we gleaned from this hadith is that although seeking the cure and treating our illnesses is permitted, and even we could argue recommended because the hadith where the Prophet said, Ya ayyuhan nas tadawu. He said, O oh, people, Seek treatments for your illnesses. We could argue that it's recommended. The Prophet is recommending, encouraging us to treat our illnesses. Although it's at least permitted, and perhaps we could argue recommended, that uh, not doing so while seeking the cure from Allah alone is superior because of what that demonstrates of complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reliance upon Him to bring about the desired result. And so we learn from this hadith that although seeking the cure is permitted, perhaps even recommended, not doing so is superior because of what that shows of complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reliance upon Him to bring about the desired result. Now somebody will say, okay, well you just said that a tawakkul is two things. One is employing the legal and appropriate means and the second one is putting our trust in Allah and not in the, in the means. So how is it here that tawakkul is actually what? Not employing the means. This is an exception to the rule when it comes to what? The treating of illnesses. This is an exception to the rule. That in this case, we put our trust in Allah to remove what? To remove the illness. Because at the end of the day, as the, as the Prophet said in one hadith, he said, Al-Tabibu hu Allah. He said, the real doctor, the one who really treats the illnesses and cures them is Allah. So for a person to put his trust in Allah to remove the illness is not a contradiction in terms. It is an exception to what? To the general rule that we must always apply the legal and appropriate means. Um, another thing that we learned was that the Prophet is the gold standard of certainty and the gold standard of al mustaqinin the gold standard of those who have this absolute unwavering conviction in the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the truth of Islam, etc. And the hadith that we used or the hadith that uh, showed that or demonstrated that clearly was the hadith of Jabir radiallahu an, collective of Bukhari Muslim. And that was the hadith where the Prophet was out uh, on an expedition with some of his uh, followers, radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhim. And he stopped uh, with them to take rest. And he actually lied down himself and took a nap under a shaded tree. And when he did that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, while he was napping and he had his sword hanging on that one of the branches of that tree, 
a uh, Arab, I'm, I'm sorry, a mushrik, an idolater came and took the sword. And as the Prophet was awaking, he awoke to the person with the sword pointed at him. And that person said, Takhafuni. He said, Are you afraid of me? And the Prophet said, La. And so then he responded, the mushrik, he said, وَمَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ minni, And who will protect you from me? And the Prophet said, Allah. He said, Allah. And he said it flatly, with so much conviction, that in one riwayah, the sword fell, as he, as just as he said it, the sword fell from the hand of the mushrik and landed in the hand of Rasulullah sallam. So when that happened, now the tables are turned. And the Prophet said to him, he said, وَمَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ minni." And the man, he said, oh, kun uh, khayri akhid. He said, be the, be the best of those who what? Who, um, who has taken. Basically, um, treat me better than I treated, than I treated you. Al-Muhim, uh, this hadith had a few lessons that we'll mention, we'll mention two of them actually. One of them, we see clearly the certainty of the Prophet ﷺ, the level of certainty the Prophet achieved in his absolute trust, tawakkul, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the level of yaqeen and tawakkul that all of us should be targeting. This is the level we should be trying to achieve. We talked about earlier at the outset that this yaqeen is so important and it's such a, um, it should be such a sought after quality by every believer because why? All of us are one calamity away. If we don't have yaqeen, we are one calamity away from disbelieving. One Spacious argument, dubious assertion, shubha away from disbelieving. It is the people who have yaqeen who are able to weather the storm of the shubuhat, weather the storm of um, uh, al-masaib, the calamities, weather, weather these storms because of what? Because of their certainty. So we should seek and actively try to what, increase our iman until it reaches that pinnacle of what? Of certainty. Uh, the second one is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects those who achieve the level of certain faith and absolute de dependence. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them. If we do achieve this level of certainty, we learn how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be fi awnina. How Allah will help us. Look how He helped the Prophet This hadith is not being mentioned so we can see that Allah protects the Prophet. We know that without the hadith. It's there to show us that if we achieve a similar level of faith and certainty, will achieve a similar level of protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, there's a lot more actually uh, that I wanted to cover, uh, but unfortunately it is time for the adhan. We got a little bit of a late start. So what I will do is we'll pick this up uh, tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, uh, complete our recap, and also hopefully start the Bab of Istiqamah, inshallah ta'ala. Until then, brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as always to bless your houses, to bless your spouses, to bless your families, to bless your health, to bless your wealth, and to bless you and make you blessed wherever you may be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen to the talk and follow the best of it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who he teaches beneficial knowledge. And who he truly allows to benefit from that knowledge by making us from those who put it into practice. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. Anabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.